Monoidal categories and their representations. Lecture 8. Braided monoidal categories. We start from the definition of a symmetric monoidal category. Let C be a monoidal category with a tensor product, the identity object I, the associator alpha, and the unitors lambda and rho. Definition. We say that C is a symmetric monoidal category provided that, for any pair X and Y of objects in C, there is an isomorphism denoted by sigma sub X, Y, and this isomorphism goes from X tensor Y to Y tensor X. This isomorphism is supposed to be natural in both X and Y, and such that the following three diagrams commute for all involved objects. The first diagram is the inverse law. If we start from x tensor y and go by sigma to y tensor x, and then again by sigma to x tensor y, the composition should be the identity on x tensor y. Then we have the unit coherence. If we start from i tensor x and go to x by the left unitor, it should be the same as first applying sigma and go into x tensor i, and then applying the right unitor. And the associativity coherence, it's a hexagon diagram. If we start from x tensor y and then tensor z, then we have two natural passes to go to y tensor z tensor x. The first way is that we first apply the associator to go to x tensor y tensor z, then we swap x and y tensor z using sigma. And finally, we apply the associator again to go to y tensor z tensor x. Alternatively, we first swap x and y to go to y tensor x tensor z using sigma. Then we apply the associator to go to y tensor x tensor z. And finally, we apply sigma again to swap x and z, and we go to y tensor, z tensor, x. So these two ways should coincide. Here is an example. The monoidal category of all sets, where the tensor product is the Cartesian product, the identity object is a fixed singleton, this category is symmetric monoidal, where sigma is defined by swapping two components in the Cartesian product. So the pair x, y is sent by sigma to y, x. So here is the checking of all the laws. So the inverse law, we start from x, y, we apply sigma, we go to y, x, we apply sigma again, we go to x, y, and the composition is the identity. Here is the unit coherence. If you start from the pair star, comma, x, then the left unitor sends it to x. Sigma sends this pair to x, comma, star, and then the right unitor sends it to x. So this diagram also commutes. And the associativity coherence looks as follows. We start from the pair x, comma, y, comma, z, and then use the associativity to go to x, comma, y, comma, z, then we use sigma to go to y, comma, z, comma, x, and the associativity again to go to y, comma, z, comma, x. And the other way around starts from x, comma, y, comma, z, goes to y, comma, x, comma, z. The associativity sends us to y, comma, x, comma, z, and then we swap x and z and end up in y, comma, z, comma, x. So this shows that the category of sets is symmetric monoidal. Here is another example. Let K be a field. Then we can consider the monoidal category of all K vector spaces, where the tensor product is a tensor product over K, and the identity object is just K. And the claim is that this category is symmetric monoidal, where sigma is defined on the tensor product as follows. If you take an element x tensor y, and such elements generate the tensor product of two vector spaces, then sigma is defined on this element as y tensor x, and then extend it linearly to the tensor product. Again, for the inverse law, the check-in is the same as in the previous example. 
x tensor y is sent by sigma to y tensor x, and this is sent by sigma to x tensor y. So the inverse law holds. The unit coherence, one tensor x is sent by the left unitor to x, it is sent by sigma to x tensor 1, and x tensor 1 is sent by the right unitor to x. And the associativity coherence is exactly the same as in the previous example. x tensor y tensor z is first sent by the associativity to x tensor y tensor z, then sigma sends this to y tensor z tensor x, and the associator sends this to y tensor z tensor x. And the other way around, we arrive in the same thing. So this completes example two. Here are some other examples. If G is a finite group and K a field, then the monoidal category of all G modules is a monoidal subcategory of all K modules, and so it inherits a symmetric structure from the later category. Of course, we can restrict to finite dimensional vector spaces over K and respectively to finite dimensional G modules. These are again symmetric monoidal categories. The next example, if R is a commutative ring, then the category of all R modules is symmetric monoidal, and here the category of all vector spaces over a field is a special case. And here is a negative example. If A is an algebra, then we have the monoidal category of all finitely generated AA bimodules, and the claim is that this category is not symmetric in general. For instance, let us take as the algebra A just the direct sum of two copies of K. K, the first copy, plus K, the second copy. Let E1 and E2 be the corresponding eigenpotents. Consider the bimodule M, which is given by tensoring over K, the left A module AE1, and the right A module E1A. Similarly, let N be tensoring over K of the left A module AE1, with the right A module E2A. Then the tensor product of M and N over A, where M is on the left, is isomorphic to N, because in the middle we will have E1A E1, which is one-dimensional, so this multiplicity space gives the one-dimensional thing with A E1 on the left and E2A on the right, which is exactly N. On the other hand, if we tensor N with M over A, then in the middle we will have E2A times E1, and this is zero in our algebra A. So N tensor over A with M is just zero bimodule. So M tensor over N is not isomorphic to N tensor over A with M. So this category has no chance to be symmetric. Here are some basic properties of symmetric monoidal categories. Property one assumes that the monoidal category C is essentially small, additive, and Kruger-Schmidt with biadditive tensor product. So this is a setup when we can talk about the Grotendieck ring of this monoidal category. So if this monoidal category is symmetric, then the split Grotendieck ring of this monoidal category is commutative. Proof? Since x tensor y is isomorphic to y tensor x in a symmetric monoidal category, we have that the product of x with y in the Grotendieck ring this is, by definition, the class of x tensor y, but x tensor y is isomorphic to y tensor x, so this is equal to the class of y tensor x, which is the product of the class of y with the class of x. And this completes the proof. Property 2. If C is symmetric monoidal, then for any objects x1, x2, and so on xk in C, and any permutation pi in SK, we have that the tensor product of X1, X2, and so on XK is isomorphic to the tensor product of X pi of 1 with X pi of 2 and so on X pi of K. So the tensor product of objects doesn't depend in which order we tensor the factors. Proof. Write pi as a product of elementary transpositions these are transpositions of the form i, comma, i plus 1. Then for each elementary transposition, we can use the fact that the product of the corresponding 
factors x and y is isomorphic to the product of the corresponding factors y and x. And so using the induction on the lengths of the decomposition of pi as a product of elementary transpositions, we get the claim. Now we can talk about bradings. Let's see B a monoidal category. Definition, a braiding sigma on C is a choice for all x and y in C of an isomorphism sigma xy from x tensor y to y tensor x, which is natural in both x and y, and such that the following two diagrams commute for all x, y, and z. The first hexagon diagram is just exactly the same diagram which we saw in the associativity coherence for the definition of the symmetric monoidal category. And the second hexagon diagram is very similar, but now it involves the inverses of the associators. So we start from x tensor, y tensor, z. We can apply the inverse of the associator to go to x tensor, y tensor, z. Now using sigma, we can swap x tensor y and z. And then we again apply the inverse of the associator to go to z tensor x and then tensor y. So this is one path. And another path is that we use sigma to swap y and z in the product. And now in x tensor with z tensor y, we use the inverse of the associator to go to x tensor z tensor y. And then we swap x and z in the bracket. So the second hexagon axiom is that these two passes should coincide. And a braided monoidal category is a pair consisting of a monoidal category and a braiding on it. So let us discuss how braiding interacts with unitors. Let C be a braided monoidal category with braiding sigma. Then the following diagram commutes. So if we have the left unitor for x, so it starts from i tensor x and goes to x, and then if we alternatively apply sigma to go to x tensor i, and then apply the right unitor for x, then we will get a commutative diagram. So this is exactly the unitor coherence which we saw in the definition of the symmetric monoidal category. So let us prove it. So let us consider the following diagram. So we have a big hexagon which starts from i tensor i tensor x, and then using the associator, we can map it to i tensor i tensor x. Using sigma, we can map it to x tensor i tensor i. Using the inverse of the associator, we can map it to x tensor i tensor i. On the other hand, starting from i tensor i tensor x, we can go to i tensor x tensor i using sigma in bracket. Then using the inverse of the associator, we can map it to i tensor x tensor i. And here using sigma in bracket, we can again go to x tensor i tensor i. So now let's in the middle write i tensor x and x tensor i connected by sigma. We can go from i tensor i tensor x to i tensor x using the left unitor in the bracket. We can go from i tensor i tensor x to i tensor x using the right unitor for i in the bracket. We can go from x tensor i tensor i to x tensor i using the left unitor for i in the bracket, and similarly from x tensor i tensor i to x tensor i using the right unitor. We can go from i tensor x tensor i to i tensor x using the right unitor for x in the bracket, and we can go from i tensor x tensor i to i tensor x using the right unitor for i tensor x. So we have such a hexagon diagram. So note that we want to prove that our unitary coherence holds, and this unitary coherence up to tensoring with i is the southwest triangle in this diagram. So we need to prove that this southwest triangle commutes. And for this, we will prove that the whole diagram commutes. And note that all maps in this diagram are isomorphisms. So we check that this diagram commutes. So the outer hexagon in this diagram is just the second hexagon axiom for the braiding. 
the upper square commutes by the naturality of sigma. So we have sigma here, sigma here, and then draw tensor identity, identity tensor rho. So this is a naturality of sigma. Great. The north-west triangle commutes by the monoidal axiom. So here we have just the monoidal axiom on the nose. We have the associators, the inverse of the associator, which connects identity tensor lambda and draw tensor the identity. And we have a similar thing here. If we know that rho and lambda for the identities, they coincide. We know that they coincide. So these two triangles commute. Next, we have here the quadrangle here. And it commutes by the naturality of rho because we have rho here, rho here, sigma, and sigma tensor identity. And in this line, rho is equal to rho tensor the identity. So this was one of the lemmas in the second lecture. So here we use one of the properties that rho for x tensor the identity is equal to rho x tensor the identity on i. And finally, the lower middle triangle commutes. This was just a statement of one of the propositions in lecture two. So this triangle commutes by a proposition from lecture two. So this implies that the whole diagram commutes. In particular, this triangle commutes which gives us our lemma. So here are some further properties of braiding. Let's see the abraded monoidal category with braiding sigma. Then the following diagram commutes. We start from x tensor i and using sigma, we go to i tensor x. To x tensor i, we can apply rho x and to i tensor x, we can apply lambda x. So this diagram commutes. This is very similar to the previous diagram and its proof is exactly the same as in the previous diagram. Corollary, sigma for x comma i is equal to sigma for i comma x inverse. Proof, if you look at the two triangles which are given by the previous two lemmata, so we have two commutative triangles. So for example, from this triangle, we have that sigma x comma i is equal to rho x and then lambda x inverse. From the triangle here, we have sigma i comma x is equal to lambda x and then rho x inverse. So we have these two equalities and from them, it is straightforward that sigma x comma i is equal to sigma i comma x inverse because we can just look at the right hand sides and compare them. Now let us talk about the reverse braiding. Let's see the abraded monoidal category with braiding sigma. Define sigma tilde for x comma y as sigma for y comma x inverse. And it is easy to check that sigma tilde is a braiding on C. This braiding is called the reverse braiding. From the previous limata, it follows that a braided monoidal category C is symmetric if and only if sigma y x composed with sigma x y is isomorphic to the identity on x tensor y for all x and y. In other words, C is symmetric if and only if the reverse braiding coincides with the original braiding sigma. Note that if C is a braided monoidal category with braiding sigma, then the opposite monoidal category is also a braided monoidal category. So here, the opposite monoidal category is the same category as C, but the tensor product is swapped. The factors in the tensor product are swapped. Now let us talk about braided monoidal functors. Let's see be a braided monoidal category with braiding sigma. Let C hat be another braided monoidal category with braiding sigma hat. Definition, a monoidal functor from C to C hat. Recall that a monoidal functor is a triple which consists of a functor f and two maps, eta and phi. So a monoidal functor is called the braided, provided that the following diagram commutes for all x and y in C. So we start from f of x and then tensoring in C hat with f of y. So we can apply eta to go to f of x tensor y, and then we can apply f of sigma xy to go to f of y tensor x. So this is one way. Another way, we apply sigma hat in the category c hat to go to f of y tensor f of x. So again, this is tensor hat. 
And now we apply eta to go to f of y tensor x. So a braided monoidal functor is a functor for which such diagram commutes. And a braided monoidal equivalence is a braided monoidal functor, which is an equivalence of the underlying categories. For example, if you have a braided monoidal category C with braiding sigma, then we know that C op with the same braiding sigma is a braided monoidal category, and the identity functor gives rise to a braided monoidal equivalence between these two braided monoidal categories. Now let us talk about the Young-Baxter equation. Proposition, let C be a strict braided monoidal category with braiding sigma. Then for all x, y, z in C, we have the following identity, which is called the Young-Baxter equation. On the left-hand side of this identity, we have the composition of the following morphisms. We start from the identity on x, tensor sigma yz. Then we compose with sigma xz, tensor the identity of y. And then we compose with the identity on z, tensor sigma xy. This is the left-hand side. And then the right-hand side is the composition where we have first sigma xy, tensored with the identity on z. Then we have the identity on y, tensored with sigma xz. And finally, we have the sigma yz, tensored with the identity on x. So in a strict monoidal category, we have such an equality. Note that by strictness, our associators are the identities. So our two hexagonal axioms become two triangles. So we can consider the following diagram. So we start from x tensor y tensor z. We use sigma to go to x tensor z tensor y, and then again sigma to go to z tensor x tensor y. From x tensor y tensor z, we can use sigma to go to y tensor x tensor z, then again sigma to go to y tensor z tensor x, and then again sigma to go to z tensor y tensor x. And again from y tensor x tensor z to z tensor y tensor x, we can use sigma and swap y tensor x and z. So we have such a diagram. So in this diagram, the two triangles which we see are exactly the hexagon axioms for the strict category, so they are triangle. And the middle rectangle commutes by the naturality of sigma. You have sigma here, sigma here, sigma tensor identity on top, and identity tensor sigma on the bottom. So the whole diagram commutes, and the two passes along the perimeter give the two sides of the Young-Baxter equation. So we have identity tensor sigma composition with sigma tensor identity and then identity tensor sigma. And here sigma tensor identity, identity tensor sigma, sigma tensor identity. This completes the proof. And it's a very nice exercise to formulate and prove the non-strict version of the Young-Baxter equation. Let us recall what a braid group is. Consider the braid group Bn on n strands. So this group is generated by the elementary braids beta i and the inverses beta i inverse. So the elementary braid beta i, so, so it starts from n points on top, so here k is equal to n. So we have n points on top, n points in the bottom, and for beta i they all are connected by vertical strands apart from i and i plus 1, so we hold we have a strand from i to i plus 1, which goes above the strand from i plus 1 to i. And beta i inverse is the inverse thing. So this group has the following presentation as Artin's braid group. So the presentation is we have the short braid relations beta i, beta i plus 1, beta i, is equal to beta i plus 1, beta i, beta i plus 1. And we also have the distant braid relations beta i, beta j, is equal to beta j beta i if i and j are far away, so if the absolute value of i minus j is greater than 1. Let's see be a strict braided monoidal category with braid in sigma. Let x be an object in c and n a non-negative integer. Then we can look at the n-fold tensor product of x with itself, and from the Young-Baxter equation, we have that the following defines a group homomorphism from the braid group Bn to the automorphism group of that object. 
So we send bi to the following tensor product. We take i minus one copies of the identity and then tensor it with sigma xx and then tensor it with n minus i minus one copies of the identity. And our Young-Baxter equation proposition implies that the braid relations are satisfied for this morphism. So we get a homomorphism from Bn to the automorphism group of this object X tensor N. And if the category C is K linear, then we get actually a linear representation of Bn over K because the endomorphism of this object is a vector space. Uh, recall that the symmetric group Sn is a quotient of Bn modulo the additional relations at Bi square is equal to the identity. So if C is symmetric monoidal, then the Braden satisfied sigma square is equal to the identity, then the above homomorphism factors through the symmetric group. Let us now talk about some examples of monoidal categories. Consider the monoidal category of all braids. So this is a strict monoidal category denoted Carly beam, which has as objects all non-negative integers, and morphisms from M to N are empty if, if M is different from N, and morphisms from N to N is exactly the braid group BN. And the composition of morphisms is the multiplication in the braid group. The tensor product on objects is addition, and the tensor product on morphism is just putting two braids next to each other. And the identity object is zero. So the monoidal category B is braided if we define sigma m comma n via the braids which pulls the first m strands over the last n strands. So here is the example for m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2. So we take the first m strands, the first three strands, and pull it over the last two strands. We get such a braid. And it's very easy to see that with this definition, this becomes a braided monoidal category. Here is another example. Let k be a field. And for a non-negative integer n, fix an nth root of unity q. And consider the finite cyclic group Zn and the monoidal category of all Zn graded k vector spaces. The unitors and the associators in this category are the obvious ones, which are defined on homogeneous elements, and we define the non-trivial braiding, which we denote by sigma upper q, on homogeneous elements as follows. So sigma upper q applied to v tensor w is equal to w tensor v with the additional factor of q to the power degree of v times degree of w. And the braiding axiom reduces to the following identity, that q to the power degree of v times degree of w plus degree of u is equal to q to the power degree of v times degree of w times q to the power degree of v degree of u. This shows that the pair, consisting of the monoidal category of all Zn graded k vector spaces, is a braided monoidal category with respect to the braiding sigma to the power q. And it's very clear that one can choose n and q such that this is not a symmetric monoidal category. Here are some further properties of braided categories similar to the corresponding properties for symmetric monoidal categories. Assume that we have a monoidal category C, which is essentially small, additive, and Kruger-Schmidt with biadditive tensor product. In this case, we can talk about the split Grotendieck ring of this monoidal category. And the claim is that if C is braided, then the split Grotendieck ring of this monoidal category is commutative. And we have the same proof as for the symmetric monoidal categories, because the only thing which is used that X tensor Y is isomorphic to Y tensor X for all X and Y. And so we can compute the class of X times the class of y as the class of the tensor product in any order which gives us the class of y times the class of x. And similar is the second property. If we have a braided monoidal category, then for any objects x1, x2, and so on xk, and for, for any permutation pi in sk, 
the tensor product of x1, x2, and so on, xk, is isomorphic to the tensor product of x pi of 1, x pi of 2, and so on. And we have the same inductive proof. We write pi as a product of elementary transpositions, and we use the properties that x tensor y is isomorphic to y tensor x to do the induction step for each single transposition. That's all for today, so let's discuss some problems and questions at the end. Question 1. Check with all details that for a commutative ring R, the monoidal category R mod is symmetric. Question 2. Check with all details the negative example of the category of AA bimodules, where A is a direct sum of two copies of K. Question 3. Let the pair C sigma be a symmetric monoidal category. Shows that sigma is a braiding. Question 4. Check with all details that the reverse braiding is a braiding. And question 5. Check with all details that if the pair C, sigma is a braided monoidal category, then the pair C, op, sigma is also a braided monoidal category. Thank you very much and see you next time.